Welcome to our Good News program. Are you ready for the rapture? Here is Christ coming in the clouds to take us to be with him. I pray that each of you that are watching, if you do not know these truths, here's what God's word says to you. And you need to know these because if this is foolishness unto you, here's what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You can never know this book apart from salvation. And after we're finished today, every person that's listening can understand salvation. We're going through this with you because we want you to know what these things that we're talking about, our inheritance in Christ is right here for you. And you, this is the most important thing in life. Nothing else. With all the things that are happening, and we are going to show you these next few weeks, all the prophecies that are being fulfilled today that nothing has to happen before the rapture takes place. And we're going to see this in the book of Revelation. We're going to see everything that's happening today to show you that you do not have to fear the things coming on the earth, that you're ready to meet the Lord in the air. And we're going to be studying from John chapter 17 about his prayer that he prayed for us before he went back to heaven. He said in chapter 17 of the book of John, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. That should be the desire of every believer. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life, we have eternal life, to as many as thou hast given him. You see in, ver in chapter 16, he says in verse 27, For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. You see, he came from heaven's glory knowing all the sufferings that he was going to go through for you and for me, that we could have eternal life. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, today we thank Thee and praise Thee that every person that's listening can truly know Thee as personal Savior. And we thank Thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. And we rejoice in all that Thou art going to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we're talking about what happened in the book of John chapter 17, in chap verse 5, he says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You see, this is what he's going back to glory. He had to die. He had to come because he God can't die and angels can't die. So he had to come and become man, his incarnation, become man that he could go to the cross and die for us. That's why he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. 
And then he says in verse six, I have manifested thy name. You see, we have his name as a child of God. Unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world, thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. You see, he's the living word. This word should be the most important thing in life. The overflow of our Bible study is what blesses the life of others. How much time do you spend in Bible study? This is the way that you can be a blessing to others by living his word out. He will live his life out through you if you believe and obey. And he also says in verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You see, you cannot please him apart from being a child of God and studying this truth. So he leaves them in the world. He's telling them what he has given to them and what he has given to us. And this is likewise the burden, his continuing intercession for us today. Did you know that he tells us in this book, he says, now listen to those of you that are listening today. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them. You see, you are to give out this book. You're to give out this New Testament for every person. We have more wonderful saints giving out this New Testament and people are coming to know Christ as Savior. And I can tell you, every person that's listening, I have more black people giving out the word of God that you could ever imagine. And these are the saints in this city. And you need to know that. And they are our sisters and brothers. And they love the Lord. And they're giving these out all over. And this is how we are to do as children of God. There can be no hatred in a true believer's life. God says this in his word, and you need to know this as a child of God. He says in 1 John, he says, If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And then we must always go back to 1 John 3. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. You're not a child of God. This is what the book says. You're a liar. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. This is God's word, and he is the one that wrote it, and we are to give it out. You know this is what he says. Have you received this bequest? Are you treasuring it as you would a mother's last bequest of you and for you? Is your Lord's desire for a set apart life receiving his word and giving it out. You see, once we receive it, we must give it out or he can't continue to give us wisdom if we fail to give it out. Is his prayer finding an answer in your life? Faith grows through prayer. The person who learns to pray also learns to believe. That's all I'll ever need. Prayer, worship, and communion with the Lord. The only ministry that satisfies your soul is your prayer and worship to the Lord. All ministry to others flows out of our ministry unto the Lord. Have you given yourself completely to God, body, soul, and spirit? My one calling on this earth is to minister unto the Lord. Then you'll be ready 
for what God sees as a full-time ministry. Here is how you'll know that you're ready for a full-time ministry. You don't need an endorsement or credentials. You don't need an applause. You don't need someone to tell you how wonderful you are. When you sing a song, you are to sing it unto the Lord. And you don't need an assignment, a plan, or to be involved in some great work. You don't need a congregation or a church building. At the very beginning, they had nothing but the Word of God, and they didn't even have the written Word of God, and they reached the whole world. Read the book of Acts. The only ministry that satisfies your soul is your prayer and worship, to worship in spirit and in truth. We are to look at life from God's viewpoint. We know today as we see the one world church and the one world religion, religions are getting together. We are already a body of believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't get together with those that are in apostasy, serving and worshiping any other God beside the true and living God. Worldliness is a mental attitude, a human viewpoint. The human decision should comply with divine sovereignty, resulting in the believer doing the will of God. How about suffering? Suffering is designed to bless and to conform us to the image of Christ. No believer should ever ask, why does a good person suffer? If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. There is not a person in the world that has not suffered. Christ has suffered greater than any other person. And he never sinned. So, this is how suffering is designed to bless, to conform us into the image of Christ, and to teach us faith and dependence on Him. What provisions God has made for the believer in suffering is to teach us, is to teach us dependence on Him. We are to rejoice in our sufferings. Look at Job. All in one day, his 10 children were taken. All of his riches and all of his wealth. And then his body was covered from head to toe. What did he do? He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord hath taken away Blessed be the name of the Lord. He knew that this was from God. And he obeyed. And God gave him back double of all that was taken after he had suffered. This is what we are to do. Rejoice. There is no greater time to be doing the will of God than during suffering. There is nothing more wonderful in time of crisis, trials, heartaches than knowing that you are in the will of God. Because 1 Corinthians 3, 22 and 23, all are yours and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. Hebrews 1, 2, Christ, his only son, he hath appointed heir of all things. Look up in the heavens right now, every person that's a true child of God. There are trillions and trillions of worlds. Whose are they? Ours. Christ and ours. That's our inheritance. Since the Father has made us joint heirs with him, he cannot possess anything of the inheritance without me and without you. That's a true child of God. The child of his love, all things are yours. 
riches beyond your utmost powers of imaginations to comprehend. Consider the universe. Whose is it? But his and yours. Then live like royalty. Every true believer, this is for us. And if you don't know this today, you must accept Christ as Savior. Call on him right now. There is not an organization, not a church. Nothing can save you but Christ himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Not any other God in this world, not any person in this world has come from heaven, died on the cross, and gone back to heaven to prepare a place for his own. The Christian life is faith working through love. Faith which worketh by love is the only faith. The faith life's life sets up the highest possible control and motivation. Love for others. The greatest. If you don't have love for others, you're not a child of God. Love is the highest motivating power known to any personality. Love moved God in the overcoming of the greatest possible obstacles. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Divine love. Grace supplies all the resources of God for life's living. Even God himself, Christ lives in me, the abiding life. I have him every moment. I will never be alone. I have his abiding presence as a true child of God. If I am living where grace operates to supply these resources, I am kept by the power of God. If I move out from the realm of grace, its supply is cut off. I am thrown back upon my own resources, and I fail. Without me, ye can do nothing. He could come in the clouds. I believe it's going to be on the Lord's day. And I pray that you are living the holy life that he commands. I do what in Christ I could never do. I do what in Christ I could never do. Grace, given its freedom, never fails. Simply because God never fails. Philippians 1.21 For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I live in Christ, then for me to live is Christ. I do not live in the flesh. The life in grace, the life of faith, ministers Christ to the heart every moment of every day. It's the only way to live, the only way. So here we have redemption. Do you know what redemption is? Redemption is entirely from God. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood. Redemption is through a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. That is the only way to be saved. Redemption is by blood. Redemption is by power. Redemption is from the guilt of sin. Redemption is from the power of sin. God gave us salvation. Jesus Christ gave us his blood. The Holy Spirit sealed that redemption, that salvation, until the day of redemption. That's when I'm going to be raptured to be with the Lord. That's when I'm going to be raptured to be with the Lord. Every minute of every day, I should be looking for that and living a holy life. Salvation is secured by the blood and by the seal of the Holy Spirit. Do you know Christ as Savior? If you don't know Christ as Savior, 
you can never know what these truths are that we have just given you. Now we saw the dispensations of the Old Testament, dispensation of the Father, from, a from Abel to John the Baptist. They had a fear of God is in the Old Testament 600 times. They had a real sense of sin, that sin is real and with it comes sorrow, powerlessness, and hopelessness. You see, this is what we true believers must understand. When they brought their animal as a sacrifice, they knew they loved that animal. That animal was dying instead of them. That sin is real and it brings all the sorrow in the world. And they had a belief of the Messiah. The Jews looked forward to the coming of Christ as king. So the dispensation of the Son begins in the Gospels, the dispensation of Christ. It was a period of our Lord's earthly ministry. It was a time of great power in the Word of God. It was a promise, not the presence, of the Holy Spirit as comforter, as a spirit of truth, and as witness, looking forward to that day, the day of the Holy Spirit. That was the day of Pentecost. Now, this is the dispensation of the Father in the Old Testament, the dispensation of the Son in the Gospels, and the dispensation of the Spirit began in Acts when the Holy Spirit came on believers. And soon as you receive Jesus Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in your body. Now, we already went through the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you cannot ever know what has happened to you apart from salvation. So we see, beginning in Acts, this is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, the Davidic Covenant. And this is all through the epistles, through the book of Revelation, until we're raptured to be with the Lord. Now, this was the day of Pentecost, and when you receive Christ as Savior, you are born again by the Spirit of God, and He never leaves you. Apart from the Spirit of God, you cannot be raised because you can't be raised to be with the Lord because you have not His Spirit. So you're going to be left behind. If you just go to church and think baptism is going to save you, or think being going to church is going to save you, you are lost. Only Christ can save. Only the Holy Spirit can save. So, this is a record of a Christian life as lived. A life of rich personal experiences. The fullness of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The fullness of wisdom. He is our wisdom. The fullness of hope. And the fullness of joy. And the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the fullness of power. You see, this is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is all in Christ. Any other God cannot give you anything but sorrow. Justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. You cannot be saved apart from this book. This is God's word to each of you. And then when we come to the book of, of Ephesians, there are seven unities to be kept. For by one spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. One spirit the Holy Spirit breathes on all and operates on the will, actions, and attitudes. One hope of our calling, Titus 2.13, the blessed hope, means to have a goal, the body of Christ, one goal in our life. This is why we are, in the last days, 
And when we turn to the book of Titus, Titus 1, verse, Titus chapter 2, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope, here it is, the coming of our Lord. Now you need to know these verses. Titus 2, beginning in verse 11, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people with good works. After we're saved, we're going to be standing before Christ at the throne of God for the things done in our body after we are born again. So here, Christ may be preeminent and predominant in the lives of his people. Jesus becomes first in every action. Our attitudes, every thought is to be Christ. We have one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord. He should be master of our lives, ruler and authority. He becomes complete master. His lordship over believers brings into existence the unity of the church. One faith refers to the body of truth called the apostles' doctrine, one common cause to reach people for Christ. The devil gets people fighting each other, and this nullifies the work of the Lord by divisions. Divisions in the body nullifies the work of the Lord. And then one baptism. After you're saved, the confession of faith, salvation is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is the authority. Baptism by immersion reveals the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Just like John baptized Jesus, that was a picture of the death. He was going to die for us, that he's going to be risen from the dead, and he's coming again. He's going into heaven. Heaven was open, and he's going to take us. One God and Father of all refers to God's fatherhood of believers, who is above all and through all, and in you all. Now, do you know this? these wonderful seven unities that we have? The one body, the church, is the body of Christ. One spirit, the Holy Spirit. One hope to be with the Lord in glory and to be like him and to share in his glory. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. This is all that we have in Christ. Thank you for hearing. In Christ's 